Welcome back, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you've been a longtime subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to glass blowing, I'm Dustin. This is Kevin, and uh, welcome. Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, we're stoked to show you another cool demo this week using some awesome dichro tubing to make a little, you know, bottle and cup set. Yeah, this is really cool. This dichro tubing that dichro images is manufacturing. Very, very cool. We'll send you a link on the Instagram and Mountain Glass carries this stuff. I've never seen anything before like it that was pre-made. So I definitely wanted to try it and show you guys how it worked. Super cool stuff. Yeah. Been having some great interactions in the online class and super stoked to see 40 people signed up for the Sam Alderson class coming up. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, this is gonna be an amazing class. Thank you everybody who signed up. There's still a few more spots available um, and the links down there for the Alderson Filicello class. And then also coming up in two weeks after that, Emily Marie Glass, who we're so stoked to have here. She's amazing at making cups and decanters and she's gonna be doing lathe work, lip wraps, montages. So check out the link and, and there's an early bird special. So sign up and save a little bit of money and join us for that class. Absolutely, can't wait to see you guys. You've got also having a lot of great interactions in the Facebook group and in the online class uh, classes each week. Yeah, the Facebook group has been great. There's awesome new members and it's so supportive. We have members that, that reach out when they need a little bit of help on, on anything and people just come and answer and it's, it's very um, warm and non-threatening for, for beginners starting out. It's a place where you can feel safe to ask questions and be part of a community as we're all learning together. And speaking of questions, you know, if you guys drop a question there, drop it down in the YouTube comments too because, you know, we're always looking for more questions to answer for these videos. I, I can't emphasize that enough, you guys. Ask us questions. We're here to help you on your journey, right? Like if you're getting stuck with something, ask us the questions. We pick out three questions every week and oftentimes we have to find questions from other sources because only a couple people ask questions. So there's a good chance if you ask a question in the comments, we'll answer it. Totally. Yeah. We wanted to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. As always, they're a great place to get tubing. You know, they got this dichro tubing we just yep. used. They got color tubing, all kinds of line tubing, you know, whatever you might need. Yeah, we definitely want to thank Mountain Glass Art for their continued support and you know, again, we can't we can't say it enough, but they are the best at customer service from my experience at 25 years in the industry. I've never felt uh, like I was taken care of so well from a supplier. So, totally. Thanks again to Mountain Glass Arts. So, let's get in the studio. Let's make this sake nighttime water set or whatever and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you in there. Let's get to it. Cool. See a nice piece of some dichro tubing on the lathe here. Just gonna slide a punty in there, get ready to attach up. Yeah, this, this dichro tubing is super cool. Um, something that I haven't seen much before. And then Tony, Tony Kazzi came and taught a workshop and he showed me this tubing and introduced me to this guy on Instagram called Dichro Images. We'll put up his page right there so you guys can check it out. Anyway, I'm not sure what his process is, but probably some sort of my guess would be coating tubing in dichroic and then etching it and then sleeving it in clear uh, but he comes out with a really nice result and i'm just going to test this out and see how it works i've never used it before it's the first time i've used it and let's just see how it kind of lasts and what happens here totally you know see how it blows out see how it stretches down kind of works with different different temperatures different heats and uh, you know you're just starting to shape you can't separate it off and you're starting to shape your main vessel for your you're gonna make a sake set yeah a sake set or you know sometimes I, I like to make these little sets for next to the bedside too like I like to have a little jar of water and like a little cup next to my bed in case I wake up like hella thirsty I don't have to get all the way to the kitchen or whatever Totally, totally. Get those midnight thirsts yeah, quenched. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking about for this set because it's got those stars on it, you know? Mm, perfect. And so I was thinking uh, this would be perfect for me. But for those of you that would prefer to put sake in it, this is also kind of along the lines of a sake set as well. Just working your way along this tubing, heating up one section, puffing it out a little, using your marver to keep it straight as you're puffing it out. Make sure it doesn't get too expanded in one area. Yeah, just, just uh, moving it around here with my torch and the heat and blowing it out and then uh, mar uh, basically marvering it with a paddle and flattening it out. When you're going to work your way down here, and this is going to be eventually the bottom of the, the vessel once you flatten it out. 
Yeah, exactly. So I'm just trying to put a little bit of air in there and even that out and uh, just make sure I have a really nice round bottom that I'm going to then flatten out. And just getting it a little bit bigger, you know, this stuff is blowing out quite nicely. I mean, is, did it work relatively smooth? Yeah, it's relatively smooth. I think that um, he probably used Chinese blue tubing on the inside, so it's a little bit sensitive, but the clear that he's using is probably shot, so it kind of balances it out, actually. Makes it nice and stable with the clear on the outside. Yeah. Just marbling that a little more right on the middle there. You can really start to get the shape of the vessel. You a little bit of a organic kind of curve to it yeah it's it doesn't have to be perfectly uh square up and down and it's not quite as whimsical as wabi sabi or something like that <laughs> but it's uh definitely got some little bit of curvature and roundedness smoothness to the shape totally and you just pre-shaped a little bit of the neck shape there you know pull yeah. it down a little bit yeah. you'll do a little bit more with that later but you want to kind of get that started yeah and i, I love this torch for those of you guys who we haven't told about this is the delta delta elite hand torch and it's got got that thumb switch oh, which is so nice it's so sick it's just, like this so satisfying I mean, chunk. yeah just, just like you just hear it click on and off yeah. it just like feels like it'll be fun to play with yeah <laughs> just flattening that bottom there putting the heat in right where you want the glass to move and then using your paddle pushing it in as that lathe is rotating it around yeah, you can see that the stars have lasted pretty good, you know, even after blowing it out so big. And that was kind of kind of the test that I was looking for. Yeah, exactly. See how it kind of sustains when you blow it out, you know, how well the dichro stays and it, it looks great. Yeah, it looks really good. And you can see that this it's all green. It hasn't burnt out at all. Um, it, it's definitely not quite as pungent or as like vibrant as when you when it's all together but it's still really clear their stars and their dichroic so i totally recommend it and i did talk to joe at mountain glass and he reached out to dichro images and, and i believe he has everything in stock now for you guys to check out oh very cool hit up mountain glass arts there so you just separated that off and you're gonna take it over to the lathe to clean up that opening Give it a little snip with the scissors there. And you know, if you don't have enough heat, just knock it off and go back in with a little more to finish off the cut. Yeah, and just be careful when you're doing that not to knock it off the punny and drop it in your water or something. Totally, make sure you have a very solid connection there. Yeah. I'm gonna heat this up and flare this open a little bit with the jacks, marver it, trying to finish up this lip of this thing. And you could you could definitely do this all on the uh, on the lathe, you know, with picking off the lip and opening it with a reamer or something. But you just prefer the, the shears and the jacks. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I'm just trying to play to my strengths. Um, where I feel the most comfortable is where I'm going to try to do the work. And there's no there's no set rule that says I have to be on the lathe or on the torch. Right. It's just where, wherever I can make the move the best, I, I plan to be there. So you pop that main vessel in the kiln and you're going to start making a couple cups. Yeah, so these are going to be little nightstand cups. Just centered that on the blow tube there, made sure it was nice and on center before you open the hole. Flare it open to accept another blow tube and you'll uh, split this guy in half. That's one of the funnest flares to make right there on the lathe where you have a small hole and you're just going to open to like 16 mil. You just got to be like super precise and the way that that opens is always really fun very satisfying right yeah. kind of rest the rest the reamer on the inside of where the cold tube is and slowly yeah. open it up just doing a nice flame cut here the lathe makes these uh you know super super nice and easy right just slowly pull it back as you heat yeah i mean it's um i think that's the interesting thing a lot a lot of people think the lathe is easy because it turns for you but it it, it adds a whole nother other complexities as well so in, in some senses it's easy and it makes things easier i i totally mm -hmm. see that but it's also just another tool to learn and it's a complicated tool there's a lot of moving parts literally right. moving parts you know keeping yeah. up with things keeping yeah. up with the glass because it's just moving moving without you yeah and uh you know heating and thinking about instead of moving your glass around the torch you're going to be moving the torch around the glass right right you know and how 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 that's different changing the angle of the flame rather than changing the angle of the glass and gravity is a whole different thing if the piece is constantly at one angle i can't use gravity the same way to like stretch it out or right. elongate it i have to only use 
mechanical power in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I know you guys have asked a lot about us making a lathe video. So Kevin and I thought that we would we would do this one all on the lathe, or mostly on the lathe for you guys, and talk a little bit about lathes in general. Um, totally. I, mean, I I know that we've had several videos with lathes in, but I can't can't let you guys know enough if if you can afford a lathe you should definitely have one in your studio if you're thinking about a lathe and you're trying to decide on whether to buy uh any other lathe besides a litten lathe or a vertigo <laughs> lathe question yourself if you're going to want to spend spend the money later because mm -hmm. you bought something bad there's so many so many lays out there that are from China or other, other honestly, other companies. There's only three lays that I would buy. There'd be a, a Litten lathe, a Vertigo lathe, or a Herbert Arnold lathe. And the mm -hmm. Herbert Arnold ones are in Germany, and there's no even rarer, even rarer than a Litten. Oh yeah. So anyway, yeah, just totally. to be like super clear with you guys, Litten and Vertigo, I can't recommend them enough. Chris Kelsey's awesome. The guys at Litten are great. So don't waste your time and money on any other lathe um, because you could end up you're kind of stuck with your own service right mm -hmm. you know if you if you have a problem with a vertigo lathe or with a, a litten lathe they're going to be able to help you with it they're going to support it but whereas if you buy a lathe off you know some vendor from india or china it's yeah. going to be much harder to get service on it most likely yeah and and you it could be something as as simple as it being off a little bit and you can't fix it or a vibration i've seen there was at one point a few other american lathe manufacturing companies and a friend of mine had one mm -hmm. i went to go teach in his studio the thing just vibrated the whole time oh crazy yeah the piece no just vibrated i'm like what the f <laughs> like i can't i can't yeah. make any detailed movements at all here <laughs> yeah so and and lathe is super precise you know you have to to manufacture that with with really a lot of precision so that in the end you have that precision for the glass and that's what makes the lathe really good so the models that i have in my studio is the litten hsj and the litten h uh litten u i have a litten mm -hmm. u and an hsj totally yeah so you just worked on uh, another cup there finished the flare on the bench and popped it in the kiln and now you're going to go in on the other section open it up same thing yeah, so I'm going to heat this up, flatten out the bottom, you know, blow this out, even it out and everything. Very similar to technique, a lot of, pretty much the same deal as on the uh, on the vessel, just a smaller scale. One thing that, that working on the lathe really helps your, your hand skills, because like if you look at how I just pulled off that glass, it's really the same same technique that, that I do on the hand. I'm, I'm moving my hand and the torch is, is stationary, but, but that really demonstrates the precise way that that should be happening on the torch too and also when you make marias or bubbles or things like that the way that the glass moves on the lathe is kind of what you're aiming for in a lot of ways on the uh, by hand mm -hmm. and so by being able to see the glass there in front of you and the stuff that you're doing work that way you can bring that back to the torch and say okay i know how this is supposed to feel and look I can right. try to reproduce this on my um, without the lathe. You, you get know? such a good view even of when the glass is expanding when you're blowing blowing yeah. into it. You know, yeah. you can really see how much the air you're putting in makes the glass move. You know, you can see even it's just a little bit of puff makes yeah. it move a lot. Yep, totally. It's a great tool. I mean, I love love the lathe. I use it for most of my own personal work, um, at least for one part of the project. I'm sure mm -hmm. I use it for something, but. Um, yeah, it w I would recommend it. And also, we have a class coming up, like in what two weeks or something, with Emily Marie Glass, and she's like uh, lathe work and calmos and lip wraps. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think about three weeks, right? End of the end of January. Yeah, end of January. Should be pretty sweet. It's yeah. gonna be great. Yeah. Once again, just sealing up to the bottom there, and then you're just gonna do a nice flame cut at the top, and you'll flare this guy out. All right, so I'm just going to take this over to the bench and flare this open for these little cups. Totally. Just using those jacks and the, the shears again. You know, it's it's kind of hard to use the shears on the lathe. Yeah. It's much easier to use them on the bench, you know, and otherwise you'd have to be pulling it off with kind of a punty or something on the lathe. Yeah, like you'd peel it off, basically. Mm -hmm. And and that's a good technique. You can definitely get it precise, but it, just like with any of these techniques, takes some practice. Totally. And, you know, you just rather just hop over to the bench. It's so close. You know? yeah. Might as well. It's literally just me turning my chair. Just slide to the left, yeah. slide to the right. <laughs> so and, we got uh, the Bunsen on. 
It is uh, unfortunately crack repair time. Uh-oh. We had a little crack action when uh, we were messing with that. So yeah, you can see it there, huh? Yeah. So it's into the Bunsen. It's pretty big. It's like all the way around the bottom. <laughs> it was quite a crack. I was a little worried that it was just gonna pop in half off the punty, but uh, you know, you went in there with the mini torch and started healing it. No problem. Well, you know, we wanted to put this in for you guys and show you guys how to repair a crack because. This is so important as you're getting better at glass blowing that you're gonna have pieces that you put a lot of work into and you're gonna wanna try to not have them crack in the first place, but if they do crack, be able to work with it. Right, exactly. So, you know, you, you're kind of working from one end of the crack to the other most of the time there. You can see it there a little bit on the bottom, yeah. using the head of the mini torch to help move the glass back over there, make sure it heals up nicely. Mm-hmm. Just trying to, trying to nudge it in you can see that right on the corner is still giving me a little bit of a mm-hmm. hard time and that's a tough place too because that corner should be really nice and smooth and and having that crack in there uh could definitely leave a, a little scar right kind of mess with your flow yeah and you want to keep this really nice and warm in the bunts and you got the bunts and really raging and that's going to help it keep from cracking even more as you're working on it it looks like i got about half of it done so far but I still got a mean crack coming out of the bottom. Totally. Working on that, that same corner on the other side there. And, you know, I remember talking about, like, why this happened. And I think there was a little divot in the punny. And it, mm-hmm. it started to come from the punny because it wasn't a really nice seal. It was a little fold or something in there. Right. And then, boom, the th- cracked all from the bottom. Right. There's a little air or something trapped in Yeah. Maybe, I remember, I remember showing you. I, I, I wish we had a, a video of it. But it, it was just like a little... Um, you know how we always talk about having a smooth transition? It was just one area was a hard edge of the mm-hmm. punty. A yeah. little acute angle. Mm-hmm. That's no good. Yeah. And that's maybe as I'm going around, you can see where it is. But I'm, I'm going in there right now to, to fix that and to make that nice. Right. You want to make sure that acute angle isn't still there once you fix it. Because that'll just crack again. Right Absolutely. Off Absolutely. So I'm going to go back into the Bunsen, keep heating this up and making sure that even after I fix the cracks that I equalize the temperature a little bit and then put it in the kiln. Right. And let that sit for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Let it really sure it all comes up to temperature. Yep. And now we'll pop it in the lathe and we can get, uh, get back to business. Yeah. So it looks like I got to straighten this out. It looks like it got off center with the Bunsen's and everything like that. So. I'm putting it back in the lathe and I'm going to seal back up to the blow tube because I really want to make sure that the bottom um, is smooth and that where that crack went over the edge, it bothers me that it's not going to be smooth anymore. So I'm going to put it back in the lathe and then rework this a little bit to try to get it smoother. Right, right. And also, you know, under where that punty seal is, there's probably a little bit of variation. You just want to reshape right. that whole bottom. Yep. And, and knowing that I attached the punty, uh, wrong or like not not correctly on the last one i want to redo this make sure that it goes absolutely smooth and that no more cracks will be generating from the punty right it's worth the time to go back in and, and reshape that bottom to make sure it's it's nice and, and solid and i mean i'll i definitely think that that this happens less on fully american glass i think I'm not gonna blame the Chinese tubing for my error of the punty, but I know that it's more sensitive to my errors than American glass. Sure, exactly. So now you're just gonna go in here, start putting your heat in the bottom. You can still see a little bit of evidence of that crack spinning around there. Uh, yeah, I think if I heat this up, I can get this get this all, all really nice and, and in the right shape. Right, you're just putting that Delta Elite flame in there, really a lot of a lot of heat, and making sure you know, having your marble paddle at the ready if you want to put a little pressure in there to it. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see me going back and forth, just trying to like even this out, get that into a, a nice clean shape again. Oh my God, is that another huge crack on this <laughs> it side? M- it might be. <laughs> you know, it's in a slightly different spot than the last one. I think I think it wanted to let go again, but. You've already got it so hot at the bottom yeah. that it's it's you know not gonna completely let go, so it's fixable. I think fixable. that was like from the top of where one of those other cracks were or something, but it's like now the going the opposite direction, right? This one is going along. Right, it went it went up and around. Yeah, you know, if it had all happened at once, it would have taken a chunk out of yeah. one side. But it was it, you know cracked halfway, fixed it, cracked the other half. Well, so this time we're going to try a slightly different way to fix the crack. So instead of just going around the crack itself with the Bunsen and a mini torch, because of the placement and the direction 
in the, the kind of aggressiveness of this crack, we're going to go in and just heat up the whole center part, really fuse that back together 100%. Right, just give it a lot of heat, really kind of condense it back, puff it back out, and just reform the set, melt it back together. And yeah. that should really get that, make sure that crack is no longer present. And that, that you're able to do that since it wasn't all the way around. You know, it's not going to let go and to break into two pieces while you're working on it like this. Yeah, I mean, it's really hot. So you can see the crack is melted out of there now. I've melted it out. But yeah, if the crack can't travel through hot areas of glass. I think that's what we're trying to say is that if the glass is hot, the crack is, it's impossible for the crack to enter that area of the glass. Mm -hmm. so it I'm needs just, the stress of cold glass. Yeah. So just using the mini torch to heal up any other marks there, you know, and that's unfortunately probably going to leave a little bit of a, a scar on the glass. Yep. Yep. But you know, with some scars or some imperfections as glass floors, we have some ways to deal with that. You can see the little bump there. And I don't really like that bump on my really smooth, nice piece. So what I'm going to do is stick a marble on there. First try to even it out a little bit this way. And then, then eventually stick a marble or something over that. Totally. We can cover that up later on. And now that you know you have that crack sealed, you're just going to go back to shaping it. Make sure the shaping is back where you want it. The whole, the whole piece flows as yep. you were originally intended. Yep, yep, yep. And you know, this one definitely, it cracked a lot. I mean, this was an unusually high cracking piece, but we, we still wanted to leave this video in for, for you guys to see kind of how to, how to mess with something that's giving you a hard time. Totally. You know, it's, it's good to be able to save something like this, especially, yeah. you know, you bought a nice chunk of tube and you've been working it all day and it's like, oh geez, yeah. you know, I don't want to lose this. One thing that's, um, it's a little tougher on, on a vac stack or something where there's clear is that that clear can slide into the crack and then you'll see that hole but if you're using solid color like the solid color blowouts that we show those when they crack they just color so it'll just heal up and look the same because it is the same there won't, it won't be filled in with any clear All right nothing to flow into that little little uh, crevice so just sealing on a little uh, oval you had there and that'll cover up that uh, mark no problem yeah, just go around the edge here and make sure that's nice and smooth. Heat that up and melt it all together. Really seal it from all angles. And you're just rotating the lathe with your hand on the chuck, just spinning yep. it around. Yep, exactly. And hit it all angles there. And, you know, since you can't move the piece up and down, you gotta got to move the lathe to the top or bottom if you want it to fall or condense, you know. Yeah. So now I'm just going to turn the Bunsen back on get that nice and warm keeping that warm i don't want this to crack anymore i've had enough cracks for one day and you let that sit for maybe five six minutes before you went in in the bunsen before yeah. you went in with the next uh, next opal yeah absolutely one time when we were making that piece with all the flowers on it i had it out of the kiln for about five hours just on bunsen's attaching all those flowers totally totally you know just in bunsen flower bunsen flower mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah Got the second one on there. Got those Bunsen's back on. Get it nice up and nice and up to temp. And now you can go in and, and disattach the neck there. Yeah. And so now that I have this off, I can flare that open. Get that all nice and finished. And you're just going to let that sit, you know, again, for maybe this one even 10 minutes since yeah. we've had some trouble with this before you take it out and go over to the bench. Yep. Yeah, so it has definitely been Bunsen and the temperature has been equalized. I've taken the stress out at least to the best of my ability and my knowledge in the piece, but still definitely could crack at this point. And that's why you were so quick to take it out of the Kevlar. You didn't yeah. want to hold it in the Kevlar for any longer than possible. You yeah. know, something colder than the glass is going to pull heat out of it. Yeah. And it's going to pull heat out or leave a mark. Exactly. One, one or the other, neither one I want. So just trim that up real quick, pop it in the kiln, and we'll let that sit. So I'm just going to put this back in the lathe, slide that in, and then heat this up, and we're going to flare this open to be a little sake cup. Exactly. Took one of these sections out of the kiln while that uh, the main vessel comes up to temp. It's a nice thing about working on kind of multiple pieces of a set, right? It lets you keep working while things come up to temp or sit in the kiln. Yeah, and that's, that's good just in general if... If you're making two pieces, um, I like to make two at once. So that way I always have something to do and can put one in the kiln for 10, 15 minutes while I do something. Exactly. 
Just putting heat on the lip there, flaring it out with that reamer. Use the paddle to make sure it stays nice and even. Yeah, just kind of even out this wall, using my reamer and paddle, making a cylinder. You guys have seen seen this tons of times, so I'm opening this up a little wider than I want, push it back in to make sure that the wall stays nice and straight. And then just use a Bunsen to keep it nice and warm, and you couldn't get the flame right where you wanted it, so just support it for you know, a couple <laughs> minutes there and pop that guy back in the kiln. All right, so now we'll put the second one in, flare that out, same thing as we just did. Mm -hmm. Exactly, get that nice and straight in there in the kiln. Maybe a little quick straightening with the uh, paddle yep. and ready to flare. So again, heating it up, holding the graphite, opening that up. And that's the nice thing about a graphite reamer, right? Is you can work right in the flame like yeah. that. No worry about melting the tool. Yeah, no worry about melting it, but it does have a certain amount of time that it can last before it starts to get like red hot. And then it makes this weird sound and slides on the glass weird. And Exactly right. Yeah. It's, 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 you can't leave it in there forever, but you yeah. can definitely work in the flame totally, totally. with graphite. Shape that guy. Same deal with the Bunsen. Got it. Got it all where you wanted it there. Put that in the kiln. Same thing. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. you can go back to the bottle since it's been in there for, you know, 20 minutes or so. Yep. We're just going to flare this open in a similar way. Just putting some heat right on the lip there. Make sure it's nice and flat before you start the flare. I love those stars. Looks great. Yeah. But they worked fantastic through the, the puffing out. And I mean, even with all the crack repair. Yeah. Can't even tell. No. This would be, it'd be nice to put like a green lip wrap on this or something like that. You, got, you know, if you guys are going to make any of these sake sets or nighttime drink water bottles, put them on the Instagram or in the Facebook group and tag uh, Revere Glass School if it's on Instagram. And if it's in the Facebook group, we'll definitely see it. Absolutely. Love to see all the variations you guys are going to do. It's going to be great. Yeah. Just so, layering that out. A couple, uh, couple stages there. Yeah. Nice and flat. And then I can put a little spout into it. Exactly. Just going to use that Lynx flame. Stop the lathe for a second. You know, move it again. Go back in. Finish heating it. You don't want to leave it in one place for too long. You know, it's, you can't be turning it back and forth. Totally. So. All right. Use that reamer. Pull that l spout over. Do a little extra shaping on it there. Cool. Perfect. And then, of course, some bunsening. Yes. Always bunsening. Keeping that warm. And then we'll put it in the kiln for a few minutes, even before we take it off of off of the punty. Exactly. You know, t five, six minutes in the Bunsen, 15 minutes in the kiln. And while that's sitting, we can uh, you can take off the cups. Yep, absolutely. I'll first take off this one. You can see there's a really good view of the Dicro when it's like fully melted in uh, on the bottom there. And you can see that it still retains all of its sparkle. Exactly. Yeah, it's still really sparkly in the light there. Pull that punty off, and you're going to go back in with your mini torch and just clean that up. Make sure there's no clear left on the bottom there. Just heating that up. going to pull, making sure that all this clear glass comes off, and then I can make a nice flat bottom. Melt that little nub of the, the tubing back in there. Mini torch right on there. A little paddling, and it's all good to go. Yeah, you can. this is the, um, the Smith mini torch with the hornet 1.3 tip for those of you guys who are curious pop, pop that one in the kiln there oh we got a couple little pieces in there yeah very pretty packed kiln day there grab the second one do the same deal pull this off melt it in take off any excess glass and then paddle it back you know being careful not to heat up too much of the cup there you know don't want to crack anything Focusing that heat exactly where you want it. Great use of the mini torch. Yeah, you could totally do this by hand. You know, use a, a grabber or something. But it yep. was just, you know, very convenient to use the mini torch. Absolutely. And the mini torch is a really affordable tool. It's $100, 150 bucks. Yeah, for what you get, it's it's one of the smartest, cheapest investments in glass that, that will have a large effect on your work. Wanted to give that main vessel a little bit more time another five ten minutes or so and then we'll take it out and thankfully it stands on its own even with yep. the spout very very carefully just being real real gentle as you kind of spin it and pull that off you want to heat from all sides as you're pulling that off there make sure it comes off evenly i definitely don't want another crack right now <laughs> going all throughout the rest of the piece <laughs> that'll be a bad time and yes and don't want to knock it on the floor yeah that would be crack inducing and you know it wouldn't be out of the ordinary or something crazy that happened to us we just like oh well it was time like, yep. to do it again yep 
So just uh, grabbing your paddle there, and you're just going to flatten that bottom out. Be just real to be gentle. really careful not to so knock it over. So gentle. Yeah. You can see a little, oh, oh, little wobble. You know, make sure it's steady uh -huh. before you take your paddle out of the yeah. way. And the quick flip. And in the kiln. Cool. Let's put this in the kiln. And there you go. You can see all the set right there together. And this is, of course, for one of you guys. Uh, you can see the blue and the stars and the little um, cups. And let us know if you would use this for sake or for water next to your bed <laughs> or something else. Exactly, right? You can see the, the nice shaping on those cups there, the, the, the nice flare. And then, of course, the spout and the nice flared lip on the, uh, on the bottle as well. Just comment on the video and we'll send it right out to you. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the video, learned a trick or two, maybe something you can use in your own work. It was so fun making this little nighttime water sake set. Um, yeah, I, I love the daikro tubing and how it turned out with, with the daikro really stain, you know, as we went through the process. Totally, it sparkles so well in the sun still, you know, yeah. it looks great. Cool. Got some questions for you, Dustin. All right. So, let's see here, first up from Borowitz. Thoughts on beginners using Chinese tubing to practice, you know, when they're first starting out? Yeah, um, honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I think that Chinese tubing is, is difficult to work with. And I think for beginners, I want to go for success. As I'm mm. teaching beginners, I want them to succeed along the projects that they do so that they feel encouraged to do more. And sometimes with Chinese tubing, it's hard to progress as fast because you're dealing with the cracking and the 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 kind of the weird melting you know, inconsistencies yeah. maybe in the tubing. It's it's I was thinking about saying inconsistencies, but it's it's the tubing is consistently shaped, right? Mm, it's like mm -hmm. the temperature, thermal dynamics of it is off compared to American glass. So that's the long answer, but I'd recommend using American tubing. Uh, clear tubing, it's really not that much more expensive um, and it's worth it. What about color tubing, you know, using Chinese color tubing? Um, yeah, I mean, no. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Mm -hmm. If you need to use it for your work, you can. I, for a beginner, it makes things more difficult. Totally. And that's kind of like the short answer. The if, cost savings are going to be offset by the amount of glass that's maybe exactly. that's going to break, possibly. You know, how valuable is your time? It's your most limited resource, to be honest. Very true. Yep. Next up from Young Shy, what big things does Revere Glass have planned for 2021? In 2021, Kevin and I were going to be working on season three of On the Torch. We got a bunch of workshops already planned in 2021. There's going to be about one workshop a month. That's going to be exciting. Hopefully, the world will normalize a little bit sometime towards the end of 2021. And mm -hmm. you guys are welcome to come out here and hang out and take a little glass retreat I don't know just yeah should be good we'll start we got some yeah. other video video ideas going we'll have some more people out for some collab on the yeah. torches if you guys want to come out for a collab if you're if you're making something that's a specific technique that you want to share send us a message we'll, we'd love to have you on the torch for uh, season three totally yeah it should be a should be a good year cool final question for you here Dustin from Speculo Boro, do you have a preference for propane or natural gas when it comes to blowing glass? Uh, I have a preference for propane for sure. Natural gas I've used, uh, they use, they, I use natural gas some in Italy at some of the locations. Um, the HVO studio that Mark has, that mm -hmm. studio runs on natural gas mm, as well. Okay. It's a little bit cooler, so the, the glass doesn't heat up quite as fast and it's a little less forceful. Of a, of a flame. Mm -hmm. So it's great. It works. Definitely can save money. Um, it's not something I would be opposed to doing if my studio was plumbed properly. Sure. But my preference would lie with propane. Totally. Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I got to give this banger hanger away from last week, Dustin. All right, let's do it. Pretty nice one going out to Nicole E. Hope you enjoy. Cool. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to comment on this video. We'd love to give this sake set away to you. Absolutely. So. Drop some questions down there for us for the next one. Cool. We'll see you guys next year. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.